Hey, what's up, YouTube, and especially my my team family. So let's uh get right into the content here. This is just a quick news update about what's coming. So the one thing I'll say about the game now, as opposed to previous years, is the default jumpers were so slow before that they could be absolutely unusable, and the defensive movement was so fast before that a slow jumper plus crazy fast defensive movement made the haves and the have-nots of my team really far apart. So there were a lot of useless cards. In my experience so far, with the combination of rhythm shooting and the much more realistic movement, the overall, in terms of just playing the game, catching, shooting, that kind of stuff, the overall stretch of power is less wide than it used to be. But what is wider are the SIGs, right? The dribble styles and stuff like that. If you don't have good SIGs in this game, and I'm including the hop jumpers and stuff like that too, not just the dribble SIGs. If you have really bad SIGs in this game, you cannot move at all. Like You cannot do anything. You don't need the best SIGs in the game. You don't need meta SIGs, but you just need your SIGs to be in that large section of SIGs, signature moves that allow you to really move and cook. Which brings me to this collection right here. So Steph Curry is going to be probably far and away the best point guard in the game. His shot is incredible this year. Super fast. Uh, his meta SIG, I'll tell you guys right at the outset, it's his escape is really awesome. And he's got some other great stuff too that we'll talk about in depth at some point when we cover a Steph Curry card. But his escape sets him apart because you can L2 cancel out of his escape as well as just using the escape in combinations with other things. So Steph Curry is going to be one of the very best scorers in the game probably for quite some time until those point guards get a lot bigger and start getting new SIGs and stuff like that. Steph Curry is going to be way up there, especially with the rhythm shooting capability. If you get Steph Curry and you learn rhythm shooting, you are absolutely going to have a significant, significant advantage if you get your hands on this card, which brings me to the next thing, right? Obviously, Kareem is going to be good, um, but that brings me to the next thing. Like, why are these cards so powerful this early in the year? I just don't understand this. Like, I get that they're rare. I get that, you know, not that many people are going to have them, but why? I don't I don't understand that thinking of balance. Well, we can ruin balance as long as we only ruin it sometimes. That doesn't make any sense to me. The game should be more paced and balanced at this part of the year. The thing that's keeping it very skewed right now is no one knows how to play this game. I mean, literally no one. No one is playing 2K25 anywhere near its maximum level. If this same system is in place next year, which actually I personally hope it is, I hope it's just improved, um, you're going to see next year people are going to be way, way better at the game, especially with another like year and a half of it. But this first week, the game's barely been out for a week. And that's really only, you know, including the, um, what do you call it? The early release, right? Barely been out for a week. This is, we're not seeing real gameplay. So it's the cards matter a lot in terms of their raw ability, but in terms of like their SIGs and this kind of thing, not that big of a deal right now. So we're not seeing, what I'm trying to say is we're not seeing the effects of bad balance in the game yet. But if they keep going this way, you're going to start seeing the balance of this game be really, really off because the cards that you can get, I mean, they're talking about sit here and grind an entire breakout board for a 87 overall, right? Or you pull a bunch of packs and get Steph Curry and Kareem and Draymond and all these crazy cards. It's just not even close to balanced right now. And, the, you know, we haven't even gotten to the point of regular Amethyst being a thing. We're still in, if you just play the game normally, you're in kind of Ruby card territory and cards without badges and cards with bad stats. And here we have these incredible cards being released in packs. I have to say, I don't understand the design of this right now. We were all really shocked when we saw what, to the naked eye, almost looks like an I'm not going to say an end game LeBron, but let's say a mid game LeBron. And by mid game, if you play my team, uh, we mean all star break. Will that pink diamond LeBron last all the way until all star break? Possibly. And having a card released day one in packs that's all star ready, like we're seeing right now. I don't know, but I do know if somebody rolls up on you with Steph, T-Mac, LeBron, 
let's say this Carl Malone and Kareem, <laughs> you could just, you know, at, at least you don't pe get penalized for quitting this year because the, uh, the pace of the game that you play, I don't even want to say no money spent, but I mean, just that you play, right? Cause for instance, yeah, if you're building your team, no money spent, obviously it's going to be slower. We all accept that. That's fine. But what I'm talking about is even if you have these cards, so what do you do? You just go out and stomp people online because the offline is useless now, right? So how do you make MT? Because you have these crazy overpowered cards and everything you earn would be so much worse than your team. So the balance is really crazy right now. Um, I don't know how this is going to bode for as the year goes on. Eventually it'll balance out. There'll be a point where all of the cards are good and this doesn't matter as much. But the early game in my team is looking really, really weird in terms of balance. That having been said, I would say probably all of these cards play, right? All of these diamonds and, you know, pink diamonds and stuff like that because they're so very, very strong. We have to see what other cards are available in the set. Hopefully there's some good stuff. I anticipate there'll be some deluxe packs. So good luck to everybody with that. And when these drop, we'll see if we can somehow figure out while 2KDB is down, figure out how to do some breakdowns until 2KDB is up. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, the usual suspects, if you you know watch the channel, support the channel. If you get these cards in your account and you want me to do a breakdown, let me know. Hit me up. Uh, that worked out really great in last season. Uh, in 2k24 i can't say last year because the channel is still like six months old so uh, as always i appreciate the support looking forward to really getting into my team i'm having fun right now just doing breakout and building my team up getting through the season pass taking it slow as i learn the game uh, so i'm having a good time in my team so i don't want to be all doom and gloom gloom for all of you who are having a good time i'm right there with you i think the game is better than it was before i do think there are still some glaring issues with the way the ai is in my team and the tuning of my team i think there could still be some improvement to a lot of the modes and as anticipated triple threat while when you play the game is fun the waiting of waiting for games that that was my reaction to it i know a lot of people didn't see that because it's kind of the off season but my reaction to it was i i played park and I used to I used to love playing park. But once people didn't have to wait around for games, they stopped playing park. They just go to the theater or play 3v3 pro, pro am or play rec if they were going to play fives, because those were much faster games than the park. Nobody wants to sit around and you sit around. If you suck, nobody wants to play with you. You sit around. If you're good, people dodge you. So unless you're literally a middle of the road person that has a crew, you're waiting a lot. In those game modes and even if you are a middle of the road person who has a crew you still have to deal with f waiting for games and you know getting kicked off of spots and stuff like that it's not you know it's not an ideal scenario they need to pair matchmaking with that environment in order for it to be successful um but that having been said if you do get your hands on any of these cards these guys all look like they'll make fantastic triple threat cards um, but yeah, I hope they they do some tunings to the mode to get this all working because they removed a lot of the quality of life quick gameplay modes in favor of this slower stuff and breakout, which is a whole like investment of time just to get a little bit of a reward, um, which I, I actually enjoy breakout. I just think that it's it's a very inefficient game mode right now. The question I always ask myself and I'll leave you guys with this thought as we await the power of Steph Curry and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And by the way, Brandon Roy tomorrow, right? He's probably going to also be fantastic. Is it better to play my team and earn MT, or is it better to finish your character in my career and then just play my career when your character's already built up, you can play with your friends and have fun, and all of your VC can go to my team? If you do that for a week, which was the better path? If, I, if I'm literally just spamming rec in theater with my friends and doing the quests that you get from doing that stuff, right? And I'm getting that VC and then spending that VC on my team, do I earn the same amount or more than I do by actually playing my team? And this is an important question because there should be no comparison that a person who actually grinds the mode that they're in should receive the most rewards for the mode that they're in. And uh, these cards are a great example because these cards are largely unattainable right now if you're just hopping on and having a good time playing my team. Even for several hours, you're probably not going to get your hands on 
a lot of these cards, especially the ones at the top. I know that's partially by design because if everybody had Steph Curry, then the game balance would be super duper accelerated. I just don't think that that's a good design. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. That's going to be it for me. I'm not going to hold y'all too long, but I look forward to really getting into it in my team. Now that I know how to play the game somewhat, or at least I'm at the beginning of that journey. We got the, we're off of square one. Now we can start getting into the nitty gritty and breaking this game down. So until next time, which might be tomorrow, I'll see y'all. Peace. Thanks so much. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. And if you already have done those things, I appreciate your support. Later, y'all.